Team bowling has never been more popular than it is today. We started with 112 teams. Now only two remain. Who will be crowned champion? The USA Bowling U15 Championship is next. Cleveland, Ohio is one of the nation's best sports cities. It's also home to great bowling. Today's CBS Sports Network presents the USA Bowling U15 Championship four-player Baker format bowling. The Northeast takes on the Midwest for the championship. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Bowling on CBS Sports Network. Dave Ryan alongside the Hall of Famer Marshall Holman. Interesting matchup today. Great bowling ahead. It's also boys versus girls. Yeah, it's going to be great, Dave. And, it, you know, it, it may be boys versus girls, but believe me, it's bowlers versus bowlers. They're all very talented, very exciting, and we're going to see some high energy today. And you've seen two of the bowlers already winning the U-12 USBC Junior Goal a couple of years back in Spencer Robarge and Amanda Najokas. Absolutely, and Spencer Robarge, the really, really talented left-handed two-hander, throws the ball with a, with a lot of power and very exciting, and he will definitely get jacked up, and he'll get his teammates jacked up too. Amanda Najokas, more of a down and in player, but I watched her practice just a little while ago, and she's really matured over the last couple of years, throwing the ball with more ball speed, better roll, it's going to be exciting. Team Championship Bowling is coming your way on CBS Sports Network. USA Bowling U15. It'll be fun to watch these great bowlers go head to head, but only one team can win a national championship. We're ready for bowling. Lineup for the Northeast team Paige Boyd, Amanda Majokas, Cameron Peters' sister, Paige Peters. So, Peters' sisters and two pages in the lineup. And from the Midwest team, Based out of Wichita, Brandon Bonta, Spencer Robar, Silas Limes, Peyton Montgomery. Be the four bowlers. The team from New Jersey does have two alternates. We could see subs coming in. In fact, Leslie Bone said that she really wanted to get all of her players in, so that'll be interesting to see how she does that. Brandon Bonta gets us going. And I watched him. Ten pin. Great shot. Six goes around the ten. We've seen that a lot in our in our shows. I watched him practice, and I'm very impressed with the way that Brandon throws the ball. He he gets what I call effortless power on the ball, and that's a that's a beautiful thing when you can get heavy roll, good hook back into the pocket without having to force. Brandon's the son of team's coach Kelly. Had a good meeting with Kelly pre-match. And they have already faced this team once and beat them in a very good matchup en route to today's championship show. And I'm telling you, these boys are not looking at this competition and going, oh, we're bowling against some girls. Not at all. I mean, this is this, these are bowlers against bowlers. It's going to be a really, really tough match. And uh, I'm excited for it. Paige Boyd's first shot. All ten down. Good shot. And what? A start for Paige. Our BPA oil pattern Marshall, break it down for us. All right, here's our oil pattern for this particular telecast, our BPA oil pattern. You can see it's a 42-foot pattern, so it goes down fairly long. The concentration of the oil is in the front, in the center, leaving the outsides dry, enabling our bowlers to throw the ball to the left for the left-handers, to the right for the right-handers, and have a hook back driving into the pocket. A high-scoring pace. Here's Spencer, two-handed, lefty. All Spencer Robards, I, great start. I know him well. I was doing the telecast a couple years ago in Chicago. That was the young man who won the U-12 competition. And uh, good player. And speaking of winning a U-12, Amanda Najokas, she won the girls U-12 back in Chicago. From Long Island. Bring in 10 pins, so some good shots early on. This is the best out of five championship team match. Flashback. Speaking of which, 2015 Junior Gold Championship in Chicago. And Marshall, you called it watching Amanda win a championship. It was a lot of fun. She was a very nice, but she's she's definitely grown in the last couple of years in her in her demeanor. She was very shy back then. A little, little more outgoing now, and certainly a great opening shot. Will she make the 10-10? You bet. No problem. 
and she takes a big deep breath as she walks back because she didn't exactly throw that 10 minute right where she wanted to she pulled it just a little bit but don't have to be perfect just have to touch it here's silas limes from wichita so the only player not from kansas is spencer robar she comes from springfield missouri and joined the team this year and a key reason yeah that the midwest is in the championship match i would have drafted him if i could absolutely Ball hangs, leaving the bucket, the 2 4 5 8. We'll watch this replay, and the ball looks like it's trying to make the corner, but it just hangs in the back end, leaving the difficult bucket. But the good news is he's on a strike. If he spares it, there's no loss in count. Game will continue to be tied. Uh oh, pulled it and only gets one of the four. Big mistake. Want to compete with friends on national television? The 2018 USA Bowling National Championships will be held in Dallas, Texas. Regional events are held in 16 centers across the country beginning this fall. Contact your local bowling center for details about leagues and to find a regional tournament near you. Visit bowl.com slash USA Bowling Regionals for more information. Here's Cameron Peters from Tom's River. Our first look at one of the, the Peters sisters. And look at the way she tips that ball back in the pocket. Good axis rotation down the lane. Ball drives in strong. Leslie Bone, Parker Bone the third are the coaches of the Northeast team. See this ball go over around the 13 board out to eight and then bang really breaks in quickly in the back end. This the strongest hook of all of the girls. Talk about outstanding coaching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leslie and Parker. There's Peyton the Montgomery. Four bowler Baker format. His first shot right out of that pocket. Wow, all 10 down. Down and in player, pinched the ball a little bit left, but it held pocket. And it's a strike. You could see this ball was just a little bit left off his hand, but good speed. It held the pocket, and that'll work. Paige Peters. Peters' sisters only 11 months apart. Opportunity Man. to double and just doesn't quite get the six pin into the 10. Both, I think uh, Leslie was saying they were both born in April, so they're about 11 months apart. It's amazing. Apart. They look a lot alike. Look like twins. You bet. Avoided the 7 10. That's the good news. Just the 10 pin now. Never seen a spare ball quite like that. It's polka dotted. Watch out. Oh, yeah. just falls into the and channel. Into the channel and a miss. So an open frame early. We'll see if the Midwest team can take advantage. Back to Brandon. Made a great shot in the first frame, left the ringing 10. Really not much of an adjustment to be made, just make that same good shot. Got it a little bit further right, but he's got that heavy roll on the ball. It came back and destroyed the pins. Big fan of Wes Malott. I can see why his, his release has got some similarities to Wes. Look how far to the right that ball is right there. Doesn't look like he's got any chance to come back, but not a problem. Seven pin goes down late. Paige Boyd. Has a strike for the Northeast team and the legendary Hall of Famer Parker Bone III who won 35 career PBA Tour titles. Gotta love that. Run away from suburban Cleveland. This team based out of Wichita, Kansas has a lead on the Northeast squad from New Jersey. By six pins. Game one, best out of five, championship match. USA Bowling U15. This is Spencer Robarge. He strikes here. We're gonna. I, I guarantee you, we'll see some excitement out of him. This is an opportunity for him to, to, take that lead of six pins, turn it into 16, and give his team a big lift. 
That ball was right. Never got it projected. 2-4-7. Switching for a spare ball. Spencer's taking his time. Kelly Bonta told us pre-match he does everything well. So impressed with Spencer's development. Fortunately, there can't come through. Does leave the two pin and an open frame. The future for the sport road to the finals. Marshall, let's see how these teams got this far. First, the Vikings team over New England. And the best out of three, now it's best out of five. Right, and they swept both New England and Heartland to make their way into this final. And here they are. One match left, best out of five, to determine a champion. Well, thanks to that open, they now have a nine-pin lead, and she can make it 19. Amanda steps up and knocks them all down. Big strike in the sixth. And the lead expands the day to 19. That's how you take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. Yeah, Amanda Najokas, wonderful shot here. Really, really lined in nicely. Ball down and in, 10 in the pit. And you know, when you, when you have a chance to step on your opposition, you, you got to do it. Silas Lime steps up. Tall right-hander, missed the pocket. And he came in light, left the bucket in the, in the third frame, and now he leaves the 1, 2, 4, 6, 10, and the Northeast has got a very dominant position. We'll see this ball just hang. It doesn't quite make the pocket. Goes right through the heart of the one and the six. It can be made. Got to get the ball to the left-hand side of that head pin and knock it into the six and the ten. Can he cover? Nope. Six ten. Stands for Silas. Some more info on the USA Bowling Team Championship. 16 regional event, win event winners got this far to the national championships with the Baker system for bowlers. Best out of three all the way up to our championship match. This is best out of five. Cameron Peters steps up. Look at that oh, messenger shot. The oh, the scout got number 10. Down it goes. A strike. What a shot, what a power shot. Watch as her ball tips back into the pocket strong. Head pin goes to the sideboard and the 10 pin never even has a chance. A great shot. And what was once a lead for the Midwest team is now a 41 pin deficit in a matter of four frames. Wow, big turnaround. Peyton Montgomery steps up, comes in high, 3-6-10. Just didn't trust the shot. Pulled the ball off the, off, right off the get-go. Leaves a 3-6-10, averts the split, goes to a spare ball. You see a lot of the, a lot of the players as they're, as they're bowling, and when they go to the other ball, they'll, they'll take their thumb and they'll sort of twist it. What they're doing is they're taking they're taking their their thumb grip out of one ball and then inserting it into into another. It's great great technology gives the players the opportunity to have a good feel of the ball no matter which one they switch to. Good cover. Peyton takes care of his mark. Well done. Now it's Paige Peters. Her sister just struck in the previous frame. She'd like to do just the same. And it's a 10 pin. You see a lot of flat 10s. Remember, she left the 10 pin the last time and just ball just barely slipped off into the channel. It's important to pick this up. Don't give those the opposition team a chance. Takes care of business.
Brandon avoids the double wood. Just the two pin. Oh, and the two standing. Ball sailed long on him. We'll see this ball get too far to the right. Just can't, just not enough time on the lane to recover. And you can see some disappointment from his teammates. Uh oh. Wow, missed that one. Well, I'll tell you what that's going to do. What that's going to do is going to give Leslie Bone an opportunity to put subs in because she did tell me that if she got into a position where where the game was was over one way or the other, that she would probably put subs in. And Sarah Rensky will step up right now and do just that. Right on cue. So Sarah is the sub and. Well, she's a pretty tough 410. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she's been that's difficult because she's been sitting on the bench mm -hmm. and hasn't thrown a shot in a while since practice and uh, made a pretty decent shot. But because of the lack of speed, it hooked up high, went through the nose 410. But even missing this this spare that she's still going to be in really good shape as she comes over. Parker's going to kind of probably school her as to whether to whether to take the, the count or go for it. This first game is over. And the best out of five, the Northeast team will take it. She's just shooting, trying to throw a strike shot. This game has been taken care of. So game one, best out of five, goes to the Northeast team. Coached by Parker and Leslie. Start in the nation's great sports cities. Here in Wycliffe, Brandon Bone won the Junior Gold U-12 Singles Championship. Happened here at Wycliffe against Rylan Breeze. Pretty fun to watch Parker Ball III's son, like him a lefty. Unbelievable. You know, he's really taken, taken right where his father's left off. Although his father hasn't really left off anything, he's still active to this day. But nobody had more fun that day than Brandon Bone. And Leslie Bone and Parker Bone III coached up Brandon for that championship. And now they are co-coaches looking for the team title USA Bowling U15 game two in the best of five Northeast won the first one pretty handily 189 163 top of the lineup page boy 810 no the eight does fall out and Leslie was able to get all of her players in because she had As that She promised us yesterday yeah. in our meeting she well, would. She had a dominating lead with two frames to go. We'll take another look at this shot by Paige Boyd. Watch the eight pin. It looks like it's just not, well, you sure it is. Hang on. Oh my gosh, just does fall into the channel. And we saw her, we saw her teammate, um, I think it was Paige Peters that, that just had the ball fall into the channel. Well, there's an opening for the Midwest team. Brandon Bonta, we've talked about his favorite bowler being Wes Mallott. Watch the way he gets around the ball at the bottom of the swing. Real firm, real strong. Solid four. Take a good look at Brandon's style. A little higher than shoulder high backswing. Good knee bend and just nice projection out of the lane and, and gets that power without, without having to force it. That's a great quality is his his father and coach appreciate that. Kelly told us pre-match it's just been an absolute blast to coach these guys all the way to the championship. And the dad's really great experience. Man, the jokers. Man steps up and puts all ten back. That's a what she really strong looking strike in the one three pocket. Yeah, that's what she did in the last game on the on the on the opposite lane. So she hasn't missed a beat. Here's Spencer. Got his name on the arm sleeve. That's pretty sharp, isn't that it? That is nice, yeah. <laughs> He's all customed out. Got to look the part. 
Two-hander. Lefty, wow. Saw us through the rack, nothing but shrapnel. Beautiful shot. This, just, this shot gets lodged right in the one-two high flush pocket and everything's down immediately. He knows. Beautiful shot. Cam Peters was right in that one three pocket herself. So we're seeing the level ratchet up here in game two. This is the shot I'd be interested in seeing because Silas, he struggled in that first game. He, he, had, he had two shots. They both came in light. And as you can see, his coach was over there talking to him before he throws this ball. It was closer. He kept it more online, but still he's not getting the not getting the leverage at the bottom of the swing. So his, his ball isn't picking up the roll down the lane. It's just sliding. He did move him a little bit over to the right, but you'll watch at the bottom of the swing. It just just it's, he's around the ball. He's not under the ball, so it doesn't get doesn't get the powerful roll. This is going to be an opportunity for him to try to throw a strike ball again. <laughs> Wasn't really he pulled that? He made the spare. He did what he had to do. The, you know, the, really the, the reason why he's not getting that leverage is because his his he's just not hitting the line in proper timing. So his his body is out of position. So he can't can't get the good roll on the ball. I'm sure they're talking about that right now. Here's Paige Peters. Leslie Bone told us yesterday she has great confidence in her shot making. She's left two 10 pins in the first two shots she's thrown. And now it's three. She's making three great, making great shots. Hasn't been able to, to knock the 10 pin down. She's made one of them. She's missed one of them. Well done. This is a really big game for the for the Midwest team. You know, if you, to go down to to none, to love, it's a it's a hard road to climb back from. So they really, really want to even this match up, make it a best two out of three. And you can see the focus and intensity really start to escalate with the Midwest team, knowing that essentially a must-win game here. Yeah. Peyton Montgomery. Oh, Brooklyn. Calling for Brooklyn. He's got it. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> it was a good call. <laughs> that must have been one he of his. Right. Must have been one of his teammates who saw that immediately pulled and was yelling for the Brooklyn. <laughs> now, you know, it wasn't pretty, but hey, we'll take it. You know, it's interesting. The uh, Midwest team only has the four players. There's no there's no substitution they can make because they, they basically they're they're going to dance with the with the players they brung and. Uh, Right now, it's going to be. It, it will be interesting to see how how, how Silas approaches this next shot because he's kind of the wild card on their team. Top of the lineup, Paige Boyd. Parker well, ball the oh, third is her favorite. She had to say that, didn't That's she? That's a pretty <laughs> smart thing to say for a young lady with yeah. one of your coaches being a legendary. Parker ball the third, and that'll make Parker proud with a big strike for Paige. Doesn't she know Parker isn't right-handed? There's Doug Kent in the background, wife Chrissy. Doug's a Hall of Famer as well. Leslie and Chrissy are sisters. What a family. I mean, yeah. just the. Here comes the coach's tradition. boy with Incredible. the great release. Brandon steps up and crunches 10 back into the pit. Brandon Bonta, Kelly's son, popped up. Midwest team, 12-pin lead in game number two. Lost the first game, 189 and 163. We want to even things up here. Best the five championship match. You see Frank Wilkinson here, president of the USBC. Suburban Cleveland, USA Bowling, U15 team championship match. I get the feeling, Marshall, this is going to be a great battle all the way to the end. Oh, it is. 12-pin right the... spread right now, game two. Leslie and Parker's Northeast team down by 12 pins, but Amanda Jokas can have a lot to say about that. She can cut it to two with a strike here. Six frame. 
Northeast team looks for the double. Solid wow. 10. How did that not hit the 10 pin? That six pin, the second from the right, is going to go around the bottom of the 10 pin. It's a fickle game. I mean, it was a, it was a great shot, but it, it was a little too high. It was a little too light. If it had been an inch to the right or left, it probably strikes. Uh-oh. Watch out. And misses. That's a, that's a mental error. And with some of 10 pin, that is big here in game two. So the opportunity to, to strike and cut into that lead turns into an open frame, and the Midwest boys find themselves 24 ahead with their number one player, Spencer Robarge, coming up in the sixth frame. He's in the second slot. Big fan of a Well, they're both lefties. stars, two I lefties. Yeah, Parker Bowman third and Rhino Page. Great bowlers. Will that get back? It no. does just enough. No problem for the power lefty. Lead up to 34 pins now with a big strike from Spencer and the turkey for the Midwest team. He kind of, he's walk, kind of walks serpentine. He goes right, then he goes left. But boy, when he ends up with a foul line, he's perfect. Strong shot. Oh, I like the way her ball hooks into the pocket. Cameron Peters. Beautiful. Here's Silas Limes. Midwest team looks for the four-bagger, seventh frame. And this shot could put his team up by 44 pins. Now, the Midwest team's in good shape right now, but they're going to need Silas in the, games to, in the games to come. So it's important that he gets his game squared around. We'll see what that was pulled. And it's, wow, that really is holding pocket. That must be a very underreactive ball because it's not, it's not hooking hardly at all. I really expected that ball to go high, but it held pocket. Here's a good shot from behind. It's a good position there, but then the arm gets a little bit away from his body. Important spare. All right. He's a best. That'll, that shot right there is going to build some confidence. You can see a little bit of relief in his eyes. You say, oh, okay, I hit the pocket. Didn't strike, but I made my spare. Didn't hurt my team. Will she finally get her first strike? She's left three ten pins in a row. How about it, Paige Peters? Ooh, through no. the nose. Six, seven, and ten. Tough conversion. She has first spare ball. Ball was left off her hand and really had no chance. The only thing she could hope for was to get a break. And she didn't get one. She paid the full penalty. The difficult 6 7 10. Got to get the ball way to the right, not far enough to the right. Just gets the count. Paige Montgomery steps up. His team up by 45 pins, eighth frame. As the Midwest squad works on a spare, Rick Steele Smith. Linda Barnes. Oh, Rick's a shocker. Linda, Linda Barnes' husband. Chris did. Chris was definitely a, a Wichita Stater. Longtime star of the PBA Tour. So many tremendous bowlers have come through that program. And yeah, some the future shockers perhaps on yeah, the show here today. Gordon Vatican, certainly the number one college coach in, in the past decades. Great shot. Paige Boyd. It's still giving them an outside shot. They've got 194 in the, in the possible game if they strike out. We see Paige down around the eight board. Gets that ball stuck high flush. Nothing's going to stand. Top of the order, Brandon Bonson steps up. Team's got a big lead. Ninth frame. Ringing 10 pin. Beautiful shot. Still leaves himself in very, very good shape to win this game. Watch this ball hook back, and there's that six pin. 
going around the bottom of the 10. We've seen it time after time. Plenty of those today, right? Yeah. Battle winning the game. As soon as their anchor bowler gets up and th gets five or six pins. Marissa Cosentini will sub in here. A 45 pin spread, so Leslie and Parker are thinking that Marissa can come in, get some experience. So we saw Marissa and Sarah both sub in when the, the outcome was determined in game one. Same game two, but this time looks like they'll lose it. Yeah, it's a, it's a similar situation where the, we're they're not really taking a big gamble because the game is, in effect, already completed. But great for the two extra kids to get this experience of bowling on TV. Totally. And, you know, Leslie said, how else are they going to get experience if you don't put them in into the fire? This game is over. So the Midwest has tied the best of five match one apiece. Marissa finishes up with a spare, has the 10 pin. Midwest team from Wichita, Kansas has tied this best of five match up one apiece. USA Bowling U15 team championship. And congratulations to Leslie Bone, the IBC Youth Committee Volunteer of the Year. Absolutely. And, and it, you know, this, this is more than just a bowling tournament. This is the future. The future of our sport is right in front of us. And it's, uh, it's looking healthy. I'm enjoying it. I love being a part of the, of the Junior Gold and, the, and the, the team tournament broadcast. This is uh, and great to work with you, Dave, as well. Right back at you, Marshall. Always fun. Here's Brandon. Well, didn't ball, leave the bucket. No, he hits the eight pin out, leads a 2-4-5. Ball went a little long on him. Maybe he didn't quite get the, the aggressive lift of the bottom of the swing, but uh, nonetheless, chance to make a spare and get his team started out to a relatively safe start. And it really does come down to filling frames, you know, in, in this type of a competition. Can't cover all three, so an early open in game three. Northeast does have a lineup change. So Marissa Cosentini in that fourth slot will change out, replacing Paige Peters, who started in the number four position for the team from New Jersey. And you know, getting back to that 2-4-5 that was chopped by, by Brandon, I really think as he as he matures, he'll start throwing that ball harder and straighter for that spare. Page boy. Well, she's Ringing made some she's again. made some great shots. Lots of strikes. Kept the ball in play. You know, that's uh it's huge when you if you can just minimize your mistakes, and that really wasn't a mistake, I've just a solid ten, but if you can keep your non-strikes to nine counts, you're your chances of, of, of making marks and keeping your team in, in the in the ball game are so much better. Solid job. As the leadoff bowler, in the first couple of games, only one open frame. Uh -oh. Look out! Yeah, missed that one well wide into the channel. So another open. They've missed three of those to the right. You can see it almost. It was like, it's like Spencer couldn't get up fast enough. It was like, all right, I got to now. I've got, I've got a break. I can something Let's I can really, I can really take advantage of. They go from being an 11 pin deficit, and uh, due to that little bit of charity by missing the 10 pin, it's an even match. One open. Well, Spencer does not take advantage of it by striking. He leaves the two, the four, and the seven. He left that once before. You remember he slid by this spare, did not cover it, got just the four and the seven. This ball never got far enough to left. Faced up early. There might be a little bit of transition happening, especially with, when you have a two-hander using an aggressive ball with, you know, with the amount of, of uh, RPMs that he puts on it. It can change the lanes faster than it would if you just have bowlers who, are, who have more of a calm or non-dynamic role going down the lane. Trying for our first mark of game three. Two, four, seven. Yeah, got it. Much nice better. Nice cover right down the line for Spencer. Our other 2015 junior gold winner, Amanda Jokas. 
She's been making great shots. Less of a power player, more of, more of a direction and feel player. And I think she felt pretty good about that shot. As she should. Saws right through the rack. Pins had no chance. Great shot. Now it's beautiful. Great direction around 10-11 board. Ball tips up to the 17, and it's just high flush. Up steps Silas Limes. What do you think coach was working on there a moment ago? Well, Silas has been having some problems, so he must be, I'm not exactly sure what the coach would, would have told him, but and there's that ball that doesn't quite get back to pocket. Not only does he leave the 2-4 or 5, but he moved the 5 over further to the right. The pins will, the, the, the uh, machine will pick them up, and it'll set the pins right back where where, where they were left. So 2-4-5 is tough enough, but look as, a, as that pin rolls over and moves it over about an inch. That makes the possibility of chopping even better. Now, he left the 2 4 5 8 in the first game and flagged it left. Good spare. Good spare. And I actually, I like that ball speed better. I, I, think, I think he needs to keep his ball speed down to give his ball the opportunity to tip into the pocket. He, his ball is, is, is going past the pocket. Cameron Peters. Good shot, leaves the 10 pin. That ball was a little left, hit the oil, kind of slid a little bit, but she's got she's got very good tilt on her ball and it makes it makes it bounce back into the into the pins. You can see this, as I said earlier, a little bit left, but watch the ball as it just really moves hard. Might be the first time she's missed. Goes for a 10 pin. Cam's got it. Well done by Cameron Peters. Peyton Montgomery in the four slot. Midwest team out of Wichita, Kansas. Oh, wow, seven pin. Got to fall on that shot. Really good shot. Just the seven stands. Yeah, that Somehow. was somehow. Really, Peyton made a great shot. Did everything, did everything right. Look at the five pin. He just gets shoved in front, and it looks like it's going to get knocked over, but. Uh, Seven pin just laughing at him. He switches to a hard plastic ball, takes the thumb grip out of his strike ball, puts it in a spare ball. I would have loved to have had that technology when I was bowling. I, the one thing I struggled with it was a feel of the ball. And when you take the thumb from, from one ball and put it in another, it's, it's virtually like making no adjustment at all. Good cover. Four pin Northeast lead early in this third game. Match is tied, one and one. Northeast won the first game, 189, 163. Midwest bounced back in game two, 218, 172. Big fan of Ryan Simonelli. Interesting, a, a right hander, and her favorite bowler is Ryan Simonelli, who's a very strong, powerful lefty on the tour. Come on, 10 pin. Not going to do it. Did not trust it. Oh. Yeah, I just looked down immediately. Knew she'd whiff that one well left. So miss on the 10 pin. That's been oh, we've really seen emblematic lot. from the Northeast team here. Yeah, we've seen the Northeast team miss at least four of them. It doesn't really matter whether it's left or right. It's uh, it's an open either way. And what did Leslie Bone tell us yesterday in her meeting? First ball should be your bag when you're traveling is your spare ball. Absolutely. She Spares couldn't. were so emphasized. She couldn't emphasize that enough. And look at the power. The power that Brandon implies on that ball. Woo! Yeah, he's excited. There's nothing more fun than throwing the messenger. Head pin to the sideboard and bang. See a 10 pin. Yeah, that's a that's a fun shot. It doesn't matter whether you're 15 or, or 50. That's if you can do that, you're gonna have fun. Paige Boyd, top of the Northeast lineup. 
There's another shot thrown it's in the It's a pocket, ten pin. And there's another solid ten pin. And they've, gosh, what do you got to do? I mean, just putting the ball flush in the pocket, but it's getting in that trap zone. It's like I said, it's a little bit not flush enough and a little bit not light enough. So you don't get the, you don't get that half pocket kick of the ten pin, but you don't get the, the high flush ten in the pit. Leslie Bone told us her players should just get bored bowling, bowling spares, going for their spares, and really know about your spare routine. And well, the, you know, the more they've missed this ten pin, the, the the more difficult it becomes. There we go. There's a ten pin. She got one. Listen to Coach Bone. That's a good idea. Eight pin spread in game three. Best out of five match from just outside Cleveland. Midwest team out of Wichita, Kansas has an eight pin lead on the Northeast squad from New Jersey. USA Bowen U15 team championship. We're all tied one apiece. Best out of five. Just outside Cleveland, Dave Ryan Marshall Holman, 22 time titleist in the PBA Tour with you. Watching Spencer Robarge, a player you think could be a pro one day. Not only do I think he could be a pro, but I think he could be a darn good one. Mm. And he's put himself in position again to be coming up in a situation where he's got a strike up and he can really take this lead and move it another 10 pins up. So good opportunity for Spencer to show his stuff. Came in high last time. Midwest team can go up 18 pins with a strike here. The lefty has got all 10 back. Beautiful shot. And, and, and the reason I like Spencer is not just not just the fact that he throws the ball wonderfully, but he's got some kind of a swagger to him. And I, I like that. I think you need that as we see his ball going right into the pocket flush. And look at the way he watches it. He knows. And he doesn't just walk back. He kind of he got a little strut going on. Get his teammates pumped up. Amanda Njoka has really been bowling great. Her favorite player, Liz Johnson, not that that makes a lot of sense because come on, 10 pin. Boy, they've left a lot of those. Liz Johnson is a is a direction player very much like like Amanda is. So I I think that's a that's a perfect role model for her. Legend Liz Johnson, Hall of Famer. Great player. Two time reigning player of the year on the PWBA tour. Seen a lot of great bowling action on the women's tour on CBS Sports Network this summer and more to come. Very nice. You know, if they make those two 10 pins, they're ahead. And right now, this game comes down to um, a double for the Midwest team with a miss 2 4 5. No doubles for the Northeast team, two missed 10 pins. So actually, the Northeast team technically has put the ball in the pocket more, but they find themselves 19 pins down. Silas Limes. There he goes. Frame all 10 down. He got it. There he goes. That ball tipped up. Turkey for the Midwest team. Big shot for Silas. Got this ball into a much better earlier roll. Got the ball rolling earlier. I don't know if he made a ball change or what he did, but something was different. Come on, ball. That's right. Smiles from all of his teammates. There's something different. My gosh. I think they would like to get off that lane and move back to the left-hand lane. They just, uh, it doesn't matter what they do. They're just leaving 10 pins. It's pretty amazing to see how many there have been. Cameron Peters. Good cover. Nicely done. Follow at youth underscore bowling on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Users can expect to see youth event coverage, enter contests, and learn about all things youth bowling. Four bagger, eighth frame, Midwest team has it. Yeah, Pick that Montgomery, that's a big strike, 40 pin advantage. They're getting matched up and uh, the bad news for the Midwest team is they got to move over to that right-hand lane. So it's just a wonderful shot. Watch a six-pin destroy the ten-pin. Boy, you'd love seeing that. Come on. Come 
Marissa Cosentini steps off, and That's here we go. Nice trip of the seven pin and a strike. <laughs> and Par Parker, Parker's Parker just, just on the other side of our broadcast booth. He, look, he said, looks up to us and very kind of sarcastically going, yes, we did it. Uh, it's been great to catch up with a legend this week, Parker Bone III. Yeah. Great shot, Brandon. Midwest Strike team fast continues. Yeah, they're on they're on a roll right now, and uh, the best that the Northeast team can do is 205. Midwest team's already working at a 224, 225 pace. Five bagger. Midwest team looking to take it two games to one lead. This is a co-ed event. Turns out you have a boys versus girls final, but that's just kind yeah. of the way it worked out. A lot, not lot of, planned. Yeah, a lot of teams had 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 uh, boys and girls, mm -hmm. and there were some some that were all boys and all girls. But this was just kind of a coincidence. Top of the order for Paige, and all ten down for Paige Boyd. Well, Im important to try and they they they're probably not going to win this game, but what they can do is build some momentum to take into the next match. Five straight strikes. Spencer Robart stepping up. Chance to go up by 50. Well, all he needs to do, well, he doesn't. He just needs to get a few pins, really. You know, they're working. They're working in the in the 220s right now. Lead seven for this third game victory. Stay behind the foul line. Make a quality shot. Does that. that? Well, that's more than a quality shot. He leaves a solid nine, but that's a winner. He knows it's over. Midwest team has won game three in the best out of five. Up two games to one now. They can wrap it up for the next game victory. Our best out of five Midwest region team has taken a two games to one lead. 223-182 in game three. Christoph Schmassmann, President CEO of Chocolate Fry North America, is here. sponsors of this event, USA Bowling National Championships. So here we go into game four. Well, it's imperative that uh, the Northeast team win this game if they want to have any chance to continue to a fifth and deciding game. Parker Bowling the third told his team just prior to our TV show, trust yourself, believe in your shots. But unfortunately, it's led to a lot of missed 10 pins and open frames. Well, let's see if they can knock the 10 pins down if they hit the pocket. Well, like if you that. Hit, if you hit that high flush in the pocket, the 10 pin's not going to stand up. And you know what? When you start leaving a lot of 10 pins, you start feeling like you have to have the ball end up right there. And that can lead to some bad things because that will get you can get you to aiming instead of just freewheeling. Brandon Bonta, Coach Kelly's son. Lead off in all the games so far in our match. Strong. Great start for both of our teams. Northeast won the first game 189 163, but the Midwest has bounced back 218 172, 223 182. The last two games on the verge of a championship if they can win game four here. Amanda Najokas taking. Taking your time, concentrating, thinking about what she needs to do to give herself the best opportunity to strike. Leslie Bone told us yesterday, Amanda's one of the most clutch players she's ever been around. She'll need that. Now that ball left off her hand. And as I said just a little while ago, when you're having trouble carrying, it, it affects how you think, and it makes you feel like, I've got to stuff this high flush instead of just freewheeling. Amanda got the ball left off her hand. Lucky to just leave the three pin, but not the start she was looking for. I'm just going back to, to the what, what went through my mind back in the day when I bowled, when I left a series of ten pins. It just it, it changes your, your thought process. That is just unthinkable from Amanda and the Jokas. I, 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 I have to believe that, that her mind was not there when she threw that ball. She was probably upset with the fact that she missed the pocket, didn't give herself a chance to strike in the first in the on the on the first ball. 
And the guy who loves to take advantage of mistakes right, right. here is Spencer Robards. He He's he, got and, that how many killer instinct about him. How many him, times have we found him in this position mm -hmm. where he can really step on the other team? He's come through so far. Eight Only strikes. One open. Fourth game, his first shot. Just like that. Perfect. Right on cue. Knocks all ten back. And expands the lead. That's his ninth strike. And he had one solid nine with a perfect shot as we watch his replay. Watch the ball track out to the out to the right left, excuse me. Booms back into the pocket. Cameron Peter steps up. Now she's been nice strike. She's been strong, strong for the Northeast team. Here's Silas Limes. He struck his last time up. Looked like he got a little bit further to the right into an area where his ball would hit some dry boards and hook back into the pocket. We'll see what he does here. Very similar to what we've seen from most of his shots that have just gone past the pocket. And when I say gone past the pocket, the ball just continues to go straight without hooking towards the pocket. We'll see it. We'll see it right here. Looks like it's going to hook up there, but it just keeps sliding. Leaves the two in the eight pin. Certainly not an easy spare. Trust your swing. Two eight double wood covers nicely. Good job there from Silas. He did trust it. Exactly right. Kelly Bonta, the coach, told us pre-match that Silas is one of their best emotional leaders. Spencer has been doing the, <laughs> the heavy lifting for this yeah. team. Marissa Cousentini. Big Yankee fan, lives in Wayne, New Jersey, steps up next. Oh, 10 pin again. Almost a 7 10. 7 was one of the last pins to fall. We'll take a look at this pinfall. Watch the 7 pin. It's standing for a while, just gets nudged. Not so lucky for the 10. Hold on. Oh, no. Not, Not another one. Well, if they do, in fact, go on to, to lose, one of, the, one of the big reasons is going to be their, their lack of efficiency on making the 10-pin. I mean, it's, it's, it's shocking. It, well, it's been, it's, it's been difficult that they've left so many of them and not been able to strike, but my gosh, you've got you to pick that stuff up. And they know that. So here's Peyton Montgomery stepping up as the Fourth slot bowler for the Midwest team with yet again an opportunity to expand the lead. They work on a spare. North each team though on an open. Peyton doesn't throw a big hook. Let's keep the ball pretty well down and in. Uh-oh, that's left. And he's got the 310, so be a little bit of an opening for the Northeast team. If in fact Peyton doesn't make this. You can see how direct he throws the ball. This one too direct, never got it far enough to the right at all. That was just right at the head pin off the hand. It maybe hooked a board or two and didn't leave anything fun. Be a big boost to his team if he makes this. Can he convert? Yes! Huge shot for Peyton Montgomery. Yeah. It saves wood and it also infuses energy. Puts that ball right between the three and the ten. Beautiful. Hold on. Well, go Brooklyn. I, you know what? That wasn't a very good shot, but just between you and me and everyone watching, I, th I think the Northeast team had one coming. Yeah, you know, they've left so many pocket ten pins. So they got, they finally got some kind of a break. It's allowed. I'd say so. So many 10 pins, and unfortunately missed several. Brandon Bonta. Top of the order. And all 10 back for Brandon. Midwest team looking good. 30 pin lead midway through game four in the best out of five. Trying for a USA Bowling U15 team championship. They are getting closer. Great bowling today from Suburban Cleveland. 
the best out of five. Midwest team looking good. And the midway point, 30 pin lead on the Northeast team from New Jersey. Midwest squad out of Wichita, Kansas. And the miss, the miss spares by the Northeast team is, uh, and I know that that Leslie Bone really, really, really emphasizes practicing the spares, but it, you know, it sometimes it just kind of snowballs, and you know, one person misses one, then another, and and all of a sudden that easy spare gets in your head and becomes very difficult. Amanda Najokas, come on, Amanda, they need you right here. Great shot. Great shot. If all ten are back, you have to worry about making that single pin well, spare conversion. Yeah, that, that's the best way. <laughs> best way to make your spares is don't leave them. We see a man in a joke is just feeding the ball high flush into the pocket. Her best shot of the day. And there's our friend, Mr. Robarge. He's a bit of a character. I, I, I enjoy I enjoy talking with him. He really he just he just he loves this game. Just eats, breathes, sleeps it. Big energy, passion for bowling. Great to see from a youngster. And great to see shot making like that, all 10 down. A strong strike for Spencer. Real deal young player there. Keeps that 30 pin lead. The joke has knocked it down 10, but Robarge comes right back and lifts it where it was. Cameron Peters steps back up. She's, She's been really been. solid today. But that ball turns in high, leaving the 3, 6, 9, 10. And, oh, you can see a little bit of dejection on her face. I hate that spare because not only do you lose four pins in count, but it's one of the most difficult spares you could possibly leave to try and make up or try and pick up. It's just many ways to miss it. Need to get the ball in between the three and the six with enough power to get the nine. Well, that's not the textbook way to make it, but any way you make that spare is, is good. Back to Silas Limes. He's been really solid. Yeah, he's he has been better of late. Ball went a little long last time, but We'll see what he can do here. Midwest teams looks for the turkey. It's got to really hurry. It didn't. Yeah, it's and still. 2-4-10. I'm just not sure he's got the right ball in his hand. I think he needs something more aggressive. We'll watch this ball. It'll start out to the right. It's going to try and come back, but it's just not going to make it. You could also see when he threw that ball, he, he wasn't solid at the line. It was almost like he was leaning backwards a little bit. Couldn't get the proper leverage on the ball in order to bring it back to pocket. Is he going to try and make it? And loses another couple pins in count by getting just eight. It takes that lead, chops it down to 17 pins. The Northeast squad should be feeling energized. Marissa Cosentini. Team works on a spare eighth frame. Good shot. Good shot, boy! That ball took the took the corner perfectly. Hey, you just can't give your opposition a break. Marissa gets up there, steps up, and just throws her best shot of the day at the most critical of times. So things are very tight in the fourth game. Peyton Montgomery steps up next. Now if Peyton can strike here, it brings Brandon and Spencer for the ninth and 10th frames, which will make it very difficult for the Northeast squad. Better shot. Better shot. Messenger gets it. That ball you saw went to the right a little bit. His last shot was, was pulled right through the nose. That ball he trusted. This ball went to the right. It tips back to the pocket. Head pin to the sideboard. See you later, 10 pin. You know, it was years ago, before my time, before 
Bo Burton worked with Chris Schenkel, Billy Whalu used to say, trust is a must or your game is a bust. And it and it was true then and it's and it's still true now. You have to trust your swing. Hold on. Page Boyd crossing over. Brooklyn strike. Well, they've, they've found something. Said, well, if I can't strike in the 1-3 pocket, let's try that 1-2. Big foundation frame strike to keep things very interesting here in game four. It keeps them alive. Here's Brandon. The Midwest squad's got their best two players up. Brandon in the ninth. Beautiful, powerful. That's a ball that the that for the most part, he's the only right-hander bowling can carry that hit. Expands the lead to 17 pins. Up steps Amanda Majokas. Very interesting situation right now. Najokas can strike out for 212. That would force Spencer to get the first strike in the 10th. Don't change anything. Do what you know how to do. Hurry. Oh. Tough leave, 1 2 8 10. Yeah, that's going to pretty much seal the fate of the Northeast team. And this ball just got right off her hand, never picked up a roll. Good try. Yeah, it's going to be the Midwest team. It's uh, Spencer Robarsh. Well, Marshall's called him a future successful pro. That's high praise coming from Marshall Holman. He's been the man, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely. He's just been. He's been confident. He's been money, and he's been exciting. Look at that. Just look at the. the there's a. I love that swagger. I just. I love it. You need that, in my opinion. He's confident. He's not showing people up. He's no, just no absolutely. Back it absolutely. Up. He's, a, he's a great. He's a great young man. Ten frame. Yeah, that good shot there. The, was a good shot. He knocked the five pin down for a second, but it, it came back up. That's enough. They're the winners. They have done it. The Midwest team has won the 2017 USA Bowling U15 Team Championship. A day to remember for these youngsters from Wichita and from Missouri. It is for Kelly Bonta, the coach of the Midwest team. Well, he gets the six lits bath. And Christoph Schmossman from six lits handing out the trophy. Got some candy in that trophy. Good job, guys. Midwest team wins over the Northeast team. Three games to one in the best out of five. They are the winners of the 2017 U15 USA Bowling Team Championship. Be sure to join us Wednesday, September 6th at 8 Eastern for the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship. Now for Marshall Holman, it's Dave Ryan saying so long for the entire CBS Sports Network crew.